Right in the center of town, there is a giant flagpole. Flagpole Radio Cafe Orchestra, let's hear it! Flagpole Radio Cafe is a live theater performance of music, sketch comedy. I feel spoiled from all this pampering! Oh, you shut up! And a guest artist. But the idea is that we're in a radio studio doing a show. We have brought our own version of that to Newtown. My name is Martin Blanco. I'm one of the founders of the show. My name is Barbara Gaines. I am the co-producer. The panic is around 4 o'clock when we're doing the dress rehearsal and we're feeling what holds we need to fill. The plan is to pull out boy for a while. The idea was to create an event where the community would gather. To share music, to share word, and to laugh. We've got the biggest supply of disease urine in the tri-state area. We'll spoof lots of things, local things, national things, everyday life. Mailboxes can be dusky rose, seafoam blue, or canary yellow. I met David Wheeler after we performed our first show. He came up to me afterwards and said, that was really terrific. I'd love to be a part of it. I just moved here from New York recently. I'm an actor, I sing a little bit, comedian. Martin Blanco, welcome to the uh, couch here on the HN the Network. Thank you, yeah. in the flesh. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say. Very happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming in. you got a big show on Saturday night, right, at 7 o'clock? We do. Back in Newtown. Back in Newtown. So this was founded in 2008? 2008, uh, a few days after the big crash. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we were just talking about it on I, that's about right, the big right, short. That's right, the big short. There it is. Yeah. No, it was happening. And uh, uh, everyone had a lot of fun that night. I, rem I, I remember it well. I think people were looking to get out and sort of forget the real troubles, you know, the real, real troubles of the day. And we had a blast. The audience had a blast. And it was just what the town needed. How yeah. much time did you spend putting together that first show? Was the first that show, we decided to go ahead and do it in April, so I guess September. Okay. So we did, did that. It was half a year or so. So Put you first looked around together. for the right folks, and uh, you found some wonderful people right in town. Oh, uh, we did, yeah. No, and, and that was key to find. Yeah. Uh, and w when I started it, I had a couple of people in mind. Um, Jim Allen, who uh, you, you've seen him in the clips, he plays piano and about 20 other instruments, writes music, sings. I mean, he's a very, very talented person. Uh, I had worked with his wife. Um, we were brownie co-leaders for our daughter's brownie ah. troupe. And all, while I didn't know him, kept hearing, oh, my husband Jim is a music teacher, plays great piano, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, a couple of years down the road, uh, when, I, when I had this idea, he had called me to go, come see a show that he was doing in town. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't make it, but the idea was he was going to be at the town hall, and just playing some, some music with some friends, going to mix it up a little bit. And I thought, what a nice idea to gather at the town hall. Well, Newtown to has music, the best right? town hall. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Really do. Yeah. Yeah. With two performance venues, a smaller, intimate one called the Alexandria Room, which is a real jewel, and then a very nice 500-seat proscenium theater. Yeah. So, well, Jim did that thing, and I thought, huh, this should be an ongoing thing. That's, a, that's an oversimplification, but I thought, what a nice thing if we could manage a regular show. And I spoke to Jim and a few other people who I had been working with, and uh, to a person, when I suggested the idea, they said, yeah, I'm in. Sure, let's do it. So, now, your yeah. background is in production? Uh, it's in theater. I in come, theater. I come, come from the world of theater. I uh, did many things, uh, arts administrator, stage director, a mm -hmm. brief, undistinguished career as an actor, um, teacher, and th th the truth is, for the last 15, 16 years, I've been a full-time homemaker, stay-at-home dad. Uh -huh. So I kept involved in theater as time and interest permitted. And eight Hence years the ago, brownie troop. Too, right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but uh, eight years ago, this this idea had, had come to me, and it took off quite nicely. And it was great to be able to do something in town for convenience, but also nice to do something where you live and share it with the people you, you live with. Yeah, the people you see in the supermarket. Exactly. And, yeah, and yeah. They go, oh, you're that guy, yeah. And I am that guy, yes. So how many how many people are turning out for a show now? Are you filling it up? Um, well, you know, we'll, we'll see. We're, I think we're on track to do 300, 350. The, it fills at five, and typically we get between 275 and 500 people, Great. depending on whether, who the guest artist is, how soon we were able to start selling tickets, you know, it's that combination of things. I think we're on track for a little over 300, and that's a nice size crowd. And you do a show a year or two, two shows a Typically, year? Typically, we would do six shows a year oh, when wow. we started. The, whole, my, the one idea I had was I said, all right, let's do this, but let's commit to six shows. If we do one, it'll be nice, but if we don't follow up, people it's going to be, and they will forget. Yeah. So we had shows back to back, a month, a month, a month. And, and that's how we planned that six months to do a season of six with three right away. And that was the best thing we did because it did help build an audience. Now having said that, uh, 
and to make a very long story short, Newtown a couple of years ago has fallen onto, onto some, there were some events that were, that were very sure, sad, obviously. Course. And that, I, w I would say, took a lot of things, you know, off it track. It knocked everybody you know, back, you know, sure. in, in much more profound ways. And eventually we came back and, and scrapped together a very short season, then a full season, and then we needed to take some time off again. So, but now we're back, first time in a year, and we have three shows slated, and I suspect come the fall we'll do three more. So, with a little luck, we'll get a six-show season Good. out. Yeah. So, you're starting out with a local guy as your guest we are. artist? Phil Bowler is a Newtown resident, and uh, whenever we can have people who live in Newtown on the show, a lot of the ensemble members are from Newtown, but if we can get a guest artist who lives in Newtown, that's great. Phil, uh, about four or five years ago, did our show as a solo bass player, and he was just terrific. He, he's just an outstanding musician, great jazz bass player, and uh, he's now playing with an ensemble. And we thought, well, that's great. Now it's a, have Phil back. It's a little different, and he's there with the quartet. So we're very, very excited. And it's the quartet includes Melissa Newman, who's Melissa the Newman. vocalist. Melissa Newman, uh, Tony Lombardozzi, guitar player, mm -hmm. and Ron Vincent, drummer. Yeah. And I think uh, people in your network may have uh, very well seen them in uh, the Westport area. They play, they play down there, there a lot. lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Phil plays a lot of places, too, but, uh, but they're, they're very famous down there. So we're excited. Now, Flagpole Radio Cafe, how did you come up with that name? Uh, th well, in Newtown, for those who don't know Newtown, at the center of town, is there the big is flagpole. The, the ridiculous <laughs> big flagpole. And, uh, you can see it for a few miles, right? Yeah, you, I don't know about that. Well, you know, from the top of the flagpole, you can see out uh, sure. plenty, plenty of miles. But um, we were thinking of, there were two choices. There, there were two images of Newtown, the flagpole and the Chanticleer. And you know what? The Chanticleer Radio Cafe is just a stupid no. name. <laughs> but the flagpole How do you radio pronounce that? <laughs> Chanticleer, but the yeah. flagpole. And radio came from the idea, the conceit of doing a show like we're doing it for, for uh, uh, a radio audience. Like you know, they were Prairie Hope Companion. Very similar to yeah. that venerable show in structure, for sure. And cafe, well, that was, we served coffee and whatnot for free in the Alexandria Room for the first show. So there was always coffee, tea, and, and other such goodies there. And that was, uh, that was terrific. Now, as we moved to the bigger theater, uh, we couldn't manage the little, the little tray of coffee in the back, but we kept the name at work. So there, yeah, there it is, Flagpole Radio Cafe. It's a cool name. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, when you live in a town that, with a giant flagpole that is, you, you know, you got to incorporate that down, somehow. You got to put it in there, right, exactly. Yeah. So a typical show, you have, you have music. We have, okay. it is a nice blend. We'll have the, the house band, we'll do, we'll do some songs, we'll do some sketches that vary from uh, uh, political in nature, uh, life in the suburbs, uh, struggles of parenthood and teenagers. They're driven by all sorts of different things. Uh, and then halfway through the show, we'll have the guest artists do a set, and they typically play about 40 minutes, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. And we come back for, for more sketches, some fake news, then we'll wrap up the show with uh, with a big song. Well, sort of like Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I was little, say, yeah it sounds a little like bit like Saturday Night Live. You know, we had, it, it, for Saturday Night Live, Prairie Home Companion, even even um, um, uh, shows at the Grand Old Opry. Uh -huh. you know, it's, a, it's a very old formula, and it's one that works qu quite well. You know, that nice mix of spoken word things, uh, yeah, music, and but th I think the key is a variety of music. So sure. that from show to show, it's not like oh this again. You know, our, our house band is great with originals cover songs from, from pop and rock, uh, songs from the American Songbook, Celtic music, wow. bluegrass, and, and they're A little bit of a Swiss Army knife. It up, band, it's right? true. And then with the guest artist, then you really have the opportunity to expand it into many really Whatever you areas. want it to be, you can yeah. mold it. You know, and we've been blessed. We've had some great people over the years. And the, the palette, the musical palette, is always distinct for each show. And I, I take great satisfaction in that. Uh, people, are, people are laughing and people are hearing music that is fresh, original, played with a high degree of virtuosity. So, very And you bring in people that people might not have thought they would want to go see, like um, Christine Lavin, people might not know about her, but once they saw her, they would be They'd love entranced. her, you know, and it, it, what's interesting too, with people like Christine Lavin, uh, while she, she, ha she may not be in everyone's uh, uh, mind all the time. Uh -huh. She has a following. So you have, you're introducing her to a new audience, but then we're drawing people in who are like, oh, Christine Lavin's playing? Let me oh, drive yeah. two and a half hours. Well, she's the knitter, right? She, uh, uh, she knits, yeah. She, yeah, knits, she had she her twirls knit in, yeah. yes. She does all, you know, it, it's a full show with Christine. She's wonderfully creative. Uh, yeah. 
we had Peter Yarrow a couple of times, and he's yeah. just he's just Peter Yarrow, so that you know. Jonathan Edwards, there. you have Jonathan Edwards. Yeah. Um, we found the harp player De Deborah Henson. Oh, Conan. crazy! I saw she, the video. Oh, of that. she's extraordinary, yeah. and she plays rock, Celtic, uh, Zydeco, classical harp, sings, storytells, dances. A, a, an extraordinary dances talent. with the harp, right? With the harp, <laughs> she has a giant harp with the harness strapped on her, and. Uh, you know, she, she does it all, and uh, it, it, she in herself is a cultural experience unto herself. So yeah. uh, when, when you're bringing in that, in a given season, that kind of diversity, it, it's very uh, rewarding from my standpoint, but the audience really likes it. They appreciate it. And it's a great use of the town hall. Yeah. It's a beautiful theater, great acoustics. And for those who are looking for tickets online, is the best place to go? Is that Flagship Onla Radio Cafe? Uh, uh, oh. Fly Paul, fly, uh, uh, www dot flagpoleproductions dot org. They can Google Flagpole Radio Cafe. It'll come up. Mm -hmm. They can buy tickets online. Um, they can get tickets at the door too. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no particular there's no handling charge or something if they if they do it elsewise. Whatever's more convenient. Um, I'd say they're good. If I thought you know sometimes people are we're, we're getting close to selling out by Thursday. I'd say go online right now. But you know what? If you want to just drive up Saturday, you can. We yeah, have it's Saturday at 7 o'clock in Saturday Newtown. at 7. We have a special treat, too. We have the Poet Laureate of Newtown is yeah. coming, uh, Lisa Schwartz, and she's written a special uh, a special poem for the return of the flagpole. Radio oh, Cafe. excellent. So, you, you, you know, you never know what's going <laughs> to happen there. You know, but it's a good slogan to have, excited. right? You never yeah. know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. Exactly. Martin, thank you so much for coming on and talking about the production. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you.